So what is going on everybody? How is everyone doing today? Daredevil19 here and today we're going to be taking a look at the Mega House Variable Action Heroes One Piece Whitebeard. So let's get into it right away and start off with this ginormous box. So we do get a basic style box for the Variable Action Heroes One Piece line. We just get a much larger box compared to what we're used to seeing in the Variable Action Heroes One Piece line, as you can plainly tell. But we do get the one right there in the front of the box. On the right side says One Piece. We do get a very cool image of the white beard figure right there. And then on the bottom says Edward Newgate, Toei Animation, and Mega House. And then the uh, bottom of the box just has the barcode and blah 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 stuff that nobody cares about. Then we do get a cool image of the white beard figure again. And then the top of the box just says variable action heroes. And then the one side of it has some more images of the white beard figure looking pretty cool. Show you guys that. And then the other side of the box has some more cool images of the white beard figure. And it's just the promo pictures that we saw before the figure was released. And then the back of the box shows a few poses you can get the figure into along with some of the accessories. But anyway, that is the packaging. Let's get this figure open and take a closer look at the guy who almost became King of the Pirates. Alrighty, so we're taking a closer detailed look and Mega House did such an excellent job with this white beard. It looks exactly like white beard from the anime. So I really love the way this figure turned out for the detail. Uh, the face sculpt looks great. Like I said, we do get his signature mustache there. And they did a good job with it. It is a little sharp on the ends there, so be careful of that. I do like how they added a very subtle gray paint shading on the tips of the mustache, so that looks pretty cool. One thing I never understood is why they call him White Beard if he doesn't have any type of beard and just has a mustache. I figured it's because the name White Beard sounds cooler compared to like White Stash or something like that. But uh, they did a good job with the mustache. We do get his ginormous chin there. And they did add some uh, paint shading here and there on the face. We do get a few sculpted uh, wrinkles on his forehead there or sculpted lines. Uh, one issue I do have is a little bit of black paint got on his forehead from the bandana. So that kind of sucks. But I love the paintwork on the eyes and on the eyebrows. Very clean paintwork on it. And the eyes are both painted looking in the same direction. So good job with that. There's the side of the head there. And then I like the way the bandana turned out, mostly on the back though, because we get sculpted wrinkles and then the sculpted knot and everything on there. And there is some shading on the bandana as well, so I think the bandana turned out pretty damn good too. The only issue about it is it doesn't fit securely on his head. It's a little loose, so as you can see right there, it's, it's going to fall off very easily. So that does get a bit irritating, and it's like that with both his interchangeable heads. Now for the torso here, they did a good job with it. Nice sculpt work on the muscle definition. I like how you can see his collarbone right there. I think that looks pretty cool. And we do get some paint shading all throughout the torso as well. So very good job with that. And then we do get his badass battle scars. And they look dope. They're sculpted on there. And then we do get a darker shade of paint in them as well. So I really like the way those look. The only issue about the chest here is these two pieces... They don't really match the rest of the skin tone, and we have that issue with the Zoro figure as well. So I guess Mega House can't figure out a way to not make that a different color compared to the rest of the skin tone. Because the one up here matches the skin tone, but the one on the chest doesn't. So that is another minor issue right there. Uh, the back of Whitebeard looks pretty dope because we get his badass Whitebeard tattoo. And we get some beautiful clean paintwork all throughout it. And very nice sculpt and uh, paint shading all throughout the back of Whitebeard there. And his arms look pretty good. Nice sculpt work all throughout them. We do get some paint shading also. We get a few sculpted veins like on the uh, bicep and on the forearm. I think they went a little heavy in certain spots on the forearm with the paint shading though. But it still looks pretty good. And then the elbow joint looks good. The only issue is we see a gap right there by the forearm. You can hide it. But I mean if you want to have his arm fully extended you're going to see that gap regardless. So that might be an issue for some people. But I like how they put paint shading uh, all throughout the elbow joint. And they sculpted the elbow right there as well. So good job with that. Now we do get his sash here. And if you lift it up, you can see right through Whitebeard. So you're always going to have to leave it down. But they did an excellent job with it. And then this piece here is on a ball joint. So you can articulate it around. And when you move the leg in a different pose, you can move that up so it doesn't get in the way. But very nice sculpt work all throughout the sash here. And then we do get paint shading all throughout it as well. So very good job on that piece. As you can see, better paint shading up there and everything. So that does look pretty cool. Now for the pants, 
they did a good job with them it's like a pale green type color and uh, the sculpt of it looks great we got sculpted wrinkles all throughout it and we do get paint shading here and there all throughout the pants so very good job with that there's the back of them we do get the uh, seams right there and the back the knee joints on the back look really ugly but on the front they look pretty good the only thing though the knee joints don't really match the pale green too much but it's not like horrendously bad and I do like how they sculpted uh, wrinkles on there and added paint shading so they did do, do a pretty good job with the knee joints there and I love the way the lower part of the pants look tucked into the boot beautiful sculpt work all throughout that and we do get the paint shading of course too so very good job with the bunched up pants there tucked into the boots and then we do get white beards awesome looking boots actually we do get paint shading or shading all throughout them so very good job with that we get some sculpted wrinkles around the ankles and then we do get some on the feet as well and the paint shading so very good job on the uh, foot or the boots and then there's the bottom of them not much going on but overall I think Mega House really did a fantastic job with this white beard and I am extremely satisfied with how the paint and sculpt turned out on this figure they really took white beard directly out of the anime but anyway let's continue on moving on to the accessories we got a bunch of great stuff included with white beard so we do get his signature coat here and Mega House really did an excellent job with this I love the way the coat looks we do get the white beard symbol right there, nice clean paintwork all throughout it, so good job on that. And I love all the sculpt all throughout it, like the wrinkles and everything. And then we do get some very subtle but very nice paint shading all throughout the white. And it's kind of like a pearl white. So very nice there, nice sculpt and paint throughout the sleeves. That looks dope. And then the top, the shoulder pieces, nice sculpt and paint on them. Good job with those, nice work on the collar here. And here's the one side. They did sculpt all those buttons on there, so good job with that. And then the other side has the loops, and the gold is all sculpted on there. And the inside of the coat looks dope. I love the texture to the inside of it. That looks really cool. Very nice job there. It is articulated. The back does hinge up and down, and then these pieces on the sides, you can swivel them back and forth, and I think you can hinge them, yeah, you can hinge them up and down a little bit. Now the coat here sits on white beard okay. I think it's supposed to go on like that, but it falls back a little bit. I mean, it's not that bad, but it really makes him back heavy. So you got to kind of force him forward a little bit or he'll tip backwards. But it looks pretty good once you have it on white beard and set up. And I'll show you uh, what it looks like in pictures at the end of the review. So we do get white beard signature coat. And then we also get his Tremor Tremor Devil Fruit effects. And these things really look dope. And I believe that's what his Devil Fruit is called, the Tremor Tremor Fruit. His ability is he can cause tremors or earthquakes. And that's what these effects are supposed to symbolize. Because what he does with his fist is he'll either hit an object, a person, or he could just hit the damn air. And he creates this right here. And then that creates like a tremor. Or an earthquake he really has an awesome ability and it's extremely powerful but they did an excellent job with these effects I love the baby blue translucent plastic and then these pieces that go out further than these it kind of looks like glasses breaking and it's just a really cool effect piece here and the smaller piece looks dope too I like how it's more white in the center and then the further it goes out it blends into a blue so I think they did an excellent job with that and the sculpt of it looks great too and these smaller pieces are actually interchangeable because you could either have white beard hit it with the side of his fist or head on with the front of his fist this one is for the side of his fist and the way you get this on here I'm not sure if they're magnetized or if you just pop them in I believe you just pop them in so you just line it up with the side of his fist and just push in and then it stays in there it doesn't fall out or anything like that so they actually stay in pretty damn good but like I said I'm not sure if it's magnetized or if you just pop it in so that one is meant for the side of his fist and you just unpeg that and they're labeled on the back L and R so one's for the left fist one's for the right fist so you take this one here and line that up and this is for the front of his fist and all you do is line that up and then push that in whoops didn't get it 
there we go and it just stays in there so really cool option that they give you though to have white beard either hit it with the side of his fist or with the front of his fist just very cool effects that Meg house included with edward newgate so we do get those and then we also get two interchangeable heads so we do get this one on the left that comes on the figure out of the packaging that we did take a look at before and this is his basic type looking face and they did do a nice job with it and then we get this one here on the right and this is his smiling face so you can kind of see his smile under there but they did a good job with both of them nice paint and sculpt on the smiling one here nice uh paint on the eyes and eyebrows eyes both painted looking in the same direction and every time you interchange the head of course you're gonna have to take his bandana off and then put it on the new head just like that but the heads are fairly simple to interchange as you can see right here it's just on a uh, ball joint all you do is just pop it on and pop it off so pretty simple to interchange the heads so we do get those and then we also get his bladed weapon I forgot what this weapon is called but they did an excellent job with this I love the way the blade looks how it's black and then blends into a silver on the sharp edge of the blade there I mean that looks dope paints pretty good on it too and I like the way this gold piece looks and then the piece on the blade nice tiny scope detail all throughout the gold pieces that looks dope and then the handle looks awesome too. And where the black is, that is sculpted. And then we get the end piece here. Nice sculpt and paint on that. Kind of looks like a little pouch. And the way you get them to grip onto it, you just unpeg that, slide the hand through, and then line up the peg properly and peg it back in. Simple as that. So we do get that badass weapon. And then we finally get six interchangeable hands. So we do get a pair of fists, of course, which come on white beard out of the packaging. And very nice paint shading and sculpt work on these. I like how you see the bones right there on his hand. And I love the way the knuckles look. That looks dope. And then you can see the fingernails sculpted on there and everything. So very good job with the fists and all the hands are pretty simple to interchange. So we do get a pair of those. And then we also get a pair of gripping hands here where the fingers are molded onto the thumb. And this is just meant for him to grip onto his weapon. And you will get paint rub on the inside of the hand there. I, I got a little bit on mine. It's bound to happen. So kind of sucks. But oh well, I have a little paint issue right there on his thumb. I have no idea what that is. And you can see the fingernail sculpted on there. And there is paint shading added as well. So we do get a pair of those. And then finally we get a pair of open resting hands. And very nice sculpt and paint shading on these as well. Very good job with these. They actually look like hands. But anyway, that is all the accessories included with Whitebeard. Let's keep moving on with the rest of the review, shall we? Now, for the height of Edward Newgate, it looks like he stands around 9 inches and 3 quarters of an inch tall. And then here he is compared to... The Variable Action Heroes Mihawk, the Variable Action Heroes Luffy, the Variable Action Heroes Ace, and the Variable Action Heroes Sabo. And then here he is compared to the Variable Action Heroes Robin, the Variable Action Heroes Sanji, the Variable Action Heroes Nami, the Variable Action Heroes Usopp, and the Variable Action Heroes Zoro. And then here he is compared to the SH Figure Arts San Diego Comic Con Super Saiyan Broly and the Comic Cave Studios Mark 38 Igor. And then here he is compared to the SH Figure Arts Awaken Warrior Super Saiyan Goku and the Mezco 112 Punisher. Anyway, there's some quick comparisons. Let's keep moving on with the rest of the review. So now for the articulation, we do just get one joint at the neck. I believe it's a double ball peg, but we get some decent movement out of the neck joint here. So Whitebeard can look down about that much and then up about that much. So decent forward and back movement there. And then we do get some really nice pivot at that joint. And then it also swivels. So decent articulation out of the neck there. Then we do get a point of articulation at the torso under the chest. And Whitebeard can go forward with that joint about that much. And then back about that much. We really don't get any pivot out of that joint. But it does swivel. Now for the waist here, Whitebeard can go forward about that much. Which is pretty damn good. And then back about that much. Which is also really good. So with both joints, he can go back about that much. And then forward about that much. So decent uh, waist and torso articulation. Then we do get some really good pivot out of the waist there. I believe it's on a double ball peg as well. And then it also swivels. 
Now the sash, this piece, I believe is on a ball joint, so it can swivel. It can pivot and hinge up and down, so I like how that's articulated. Now for the arms, we get a very nice joint at the shoulder here, so you can get a great circular motion out of the arm. I do like that point of articulation. And then the arms go out to the sides a lot more than 90 degrees, so that is really good. Then they do go up and down. We have the bicep swivel, double jointed elbows that bend in pretty much all the way. Then we get a ginormous ball hinge for the wrist, so it does swivel and hinges back and forth. So really good movement throughout the entire arm, and so far actually throughout the entire figure. Now for the legs here, one thing to note is be careful of paint rub. Uh, I have a little bit up here and then some over here as well, so just be careful of that. But the legs do shift down a tiny bit, as you can see. A white beard can kick forward about 45 degrees, but if you turn the leg a little bit, he can kick up a little more than 90 degrees, but his leg does go out to the side, as you can see there. And it does go to the back a little bit, and then kicks out to the side 90 degrees. That's awesome. And then we do get swivel up there. We have double jointed knees that bend back a little more than 90 degrees, so nice movement there. Now for the ankles, they do swivel. They hinge up a decent amount and hinge down a lot. And then we get great pivot out of that joint, pretty much 90 degrees, so very nice pivot there. And then we do have a nice toe hinge. So overall, I think we get some excellent articulation with this white beard, especially with him being a much larger figure we get the same type of movement we, we do with other variable action heroes one piece figures and you're going to be able to get them in some pretty badass poses and i'm about to show you some of them right about now but anyway that is my review of the variable action heroes one piece edward newgate hope you enjoyed it if i had to rate this figure between a one through ten i'd have to give it an even nine if you would like to know the price and where to buy this figure i had mine imported from japan from ami ami so you could check on there i don't think my buddy from ageless geeks will have this on his website but if you ever do decide to buy something from agelessgeeks.com don't forget to enter in code name daredevil and you'll get yourself a five percent off discount I will put more information in the description below. And if you would like to support the channel, don't forget to subscribe and click on that bell icon. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, just give it a thumbs up anyway because action figures are awesome. But thanks for watching. I will see you later. Daredevil 19 here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the variable. It is just a lot larger compared to the boxes that were. I believe it's a double ball peg. I wish they went the route that they did that. And then we get some really good pivot out of that. Whoops, I ripped his head off, you bastard. Decent forward and back. <laughs> Damn, I did it again. I did it again, mate. We get great movement here. It goes forward. <sighs> Whoops. Over exaggerated the articulation there. Super Saiyan Broly and the Shubitababa Jubitabu. The SH Figure Arts Awaken Warrior. But they did such a great job with this. I love the way the blah 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 blah. And then we also get a pair of Chupiti Lala Kulandas. We do get the white beard. Uh, Tupa. Oh, that move up and down too, bruh. 